All right, guys, let's just get to it. The Chicago Bank of America, excuse me, Chicago Marathon, since they are not only are the sponsor of the marathon, they are the owner of the marathon was held this weekend. We haven't even mentioned the men's winner. We got to mention the winner. Benson Cripruto, the 2021 Boston winner, is now the Chicago winner in 204.24. And Ruth Chepengedich, as we said, 214.18 after a crazy, ridiculous 65 44 first half. And John, didn't she go out in 207 pace? Plus 10K, right? Or she was ahead of Pat Tiernan. Pat Tiernan is a 27-22 guy. He's number two all-time in Australia in, I think, the 10K and the half marathon. And she's running in front of him in her debut marathon at 5K. She's like right with him at 10K, then falls off a little bit. But yeah, it was nuts. I mean, to- totally insane. And we'll get to Sisson and Mance, obviously, from an American perspective. That's important. But from a global running perspective, Ruth Chepengedich running 214.18, coming 14 seconds shy of the world record, despite running an enormous positive split, 65.44, followed by 68.34 for her second half. That's the story here. This was like, I don't know, with Kipchoge going out in 59.51 a few weeks ago in Berlin, I thought that was going to be the craziest opening half split of the year but at least with Kipchoge we've seen him run that kind of pace and those breaking two things a woman running 65 44 for her first half I don't know if we're going to see that again for years you know I guess the same could be said of Kipchoge but I was just I was stunned by what she did and I was also afterwards I was like oh my god if she just paced this thing a little better she could have broken the world record easily but either way that made things very exciting seeing if she could hold on. And I guess when you blow when blowing up is 68-34 pace, which is still 217 pace, you're not doing too bad. But, man, that, that was crazy. It certainly was amazing. I can admit, I started watching a little bit late. I was getting texts from you guys saying something about 207 pace. And then I realized you were talking about the women's race. So <laughs> to make sure I turned on the TV quickly, but we should probably come up with a stat to compare it to the world record, right? The men's world record in the half is 57.33. Kipchoge goes out in 59.50, so that's 220 off it. The woman's world record in the half is like 62.52. And she went out, what was the time here? 65.44. So it's like 250. So on a, on a percentage basis, I wonder if it's actually similar. But... Absolutely nuts. I mean, she ran her first 5K in 1511. It's where it's happening, and it's it's so out of the norm of what I expect. I think I do the wrong thing. I sort of discount it. It was like when Bridget Koskai, when was that? Now, three years ago, when she ran her 214, 02, 04? 04. World record. You know, at the time, no one had come close to Paul Rackos 215.25. So I'm like, well, she's just going to blow up. This, y- y- You can't do this. And she did it, held on, broke the world record. And this was that sort of run for me. But the splits were just so crazy in my head. I just was like, this is nuts. And she did the same thing last year. Last year, I mean, she went out fast. It was a hot day. And she totally fell apart. She didn't go out in 65.44. But on a hot day, she went out, what, 67? 67.34. And they completely blew up, held on, won the race over 220. But this one, she slowed, but I mean, I guess it was nearly th- three minutes slower the second half, but it's, you're still running t- tremendously fast the whole way. Like she's essentially running, her her second half was faster than Emily Sisson's. Yeah, that's the crazy thing is she was slowing down and still running Frost and Sisson, who closed what like paced herself really well and was picking it up at the end. But I mean, it's just nuts. If you look at her mile splits, like remember last week, how we were freaking out. Yelm Zafi We thought she ran 443 
for her 24th mile. Turns out it was more about, more like a 459. We were like, is this the fastest women's split in history with a 443? Well, here is what the Chicago website had as Chepengedich's first six mile splits. 450. Now I've seen that reported elsewhere as a 447, but the website they had gave to press says 450. 456, 455, 455, 457, 457. Then she finally runs slower than five minute pace with a 502 seventh mile. But normally a woman drops one sub five mile in there. And you're like, wow, things are taking off. She started out in 450. It's just, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's totally nuts. It's amazing. Not to make it all about me, but you know, everyone's vain. Back when I was pacing Catherine Dereba, she wanted to break 220. So I ran the first mile in 520. She was nowhere to be seen. She ran the, that mile in 545. Repeat that for like three miles in a row. So <laughs> she was probably, oh my God, I'd love to see her split at 5K versus the split this weekend. Yeah, I just don't understand. Look, 214, 18, incredible performance. One of the most, one of the fastest times we've ever seen in women's marathoning. It's only 14 seconds off the world record. But I just can't help but think to myself after this, how much faster she could have gone if she didn't go out in 65-44. Like, this is the least efficient way possible to go out in 207 pace, 65-44 at the half. They're saying on the broadcast, oh, she's self-coached. But, like, you have a manager. You have some people in there that should be able to help her out with this thing. Like, last year, she goes out 67-34 on a hot day, totally blows up and slows down a lot, still wins. You would think if she's actually going for the world record, someone should just have a conversation with her and say, look, the fastest, the best way to break the world record is not to run 211 pace for the first half and then try to come back and just hold on. It's to run fairly close to even splits. Am I taking crazy pills here? No, you're not. I was wondering the same thing. I, I don't blame her. Since everything's about woke and diversity, etc. Like, do we want to blame on sexism? Do we want to blame it on racism? I mean, maybe sexism is, is the better take. Nike spends all this money for the failings of passengers, failing Kipchoge's world record attempts, or I guess that was step two. But everything is super well organized. Like, wouldn't you want to know this woman's going to go for the world record instead of just having? And what's her one pacer doing? Like, why don't they get someone to pace it properly? It just seemed weird to me. But you know, I do think that this gets at some. One of the advantages that's still available to the American runners and the Western runners is the coaching and just stuff like this. I mean, just sit in the front of the work or don't run really smart first half. Like some of this stuff is still out of like the pre-professional era. Like I, I, it just seems weird. I mean, it was an amazing run. She doesn't seem that upset about it, but she definitely, I don't think there's everyone based on, on those splits. No one in the super shoe era has ever been fitter than she was on Sunday. Well, the thing I would say is if I were her, you would think, Oh, okay. She, she's probably in like two thirteen shape right now. I don't think that's crazy to say based on the splits she ran, but did she miss her opportunity? Like, okay, she could be in two thirteen or two fourteen shape again next year or the year after that. But you need to have good conditions in the race, which she had in Chicago, but they didn't have that in Chicago last year. It's never a guarantee in the marathon. You have to make sure you're healthy. You stay healthy through training, which is, can be tough for a marathon. I look at Bridget Koskai, was supposed to run London this year, had the scratch. And the other thing is, you've got to hope that the world record doesn't get broken even more. Because now that she's running 214 again, I think that tells me just we we know the bar has been raised in women's marathoning. The world record might not be 214.04 the next time Ruth Chepin gets a a marathon. If Cosguy gets a crack at it, if Tigas the Sefer gets a crack at it, if Yalam Zafti Halor or Letta Zambek Gide, who's running Valencia later this fall, if they get a crack at it, this thing might be down in the 213s by the next time Chepin gets a shot. Maybe she missed her opportunity. This might have been it. Now, I don't know. I, I just think this, this she could look back and regret this, uh, not having, not taking this opportunity when it was there. 
John, she could have run 213, like 100%. She only missed it by 18 seconds. And I like Robert's point. Like the world record in Chicago, Coast Guy just kind of went out and did it on her own. This thing, there's some talk beforehand, and I just dismissed it because you weren't hearing much from like the organizers. Like, oh, she's going for the world record. It's just sort of like we throw her out here to the wolves and she has to kind of do it on her own. The pacing was atrocious. Um, but oh, it's just so stunning. Hansen put out a tweet, Hansen's run.com. 